Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, a more likely what if scenario for the Falcons. The Falcons have the easiest schedule, and one Brown site wants an Atlanta Falcons player. It's all next. It's Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Hitting Hard is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. We ask you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. You can get the latest episodes of Hitting Hard as soon as they become available. Check us out on the Sirius XM app as well and give me a follow at JMCH316 on my personal Twitter page. So I presented last night on my radio show a more likely scenario for the Falcons or or a what if scenario or a choice for the Atlanta Falcons okay so here's what I asked which is more likely to happen which has the better chance of happening this year the Atlanta Falcons average 26 points a game on offense or they end up with 38 or more sacks on the season okay now <clears throat> Neither one of those things is going to be all of that easy. So let's start with the points per game first. You know, 26 is kind of that magic number in the NFL where if you're at 26 or more, you're one of the better offenses in the league. You know, that 26 last year got you where you were Cincinnati and I think top six. And, you know, again, people think that you can just average 30 points a game and Oh, it's so easy, you know? I think the Falcons have done that twice in their entire franchise, right? It just doesn't happen every year. You know, even the greatest show on turf only had about a two-year run where they were averaging 30 points a game, and they had some of the best offensive personnel in the history of the NFL, right? So the idea that, you know, oh, well, we're just going to average 30 points a game, well, that doesn't happen in the league, okay? that That's just not reality in the league about what really happens. If you can get the 26 or points or more, that's a really solid number. <clears throat> and people say, well, that's only four and a half points a game more than it was last year. Yeah, four and a half points a game over a 17-week stretch. That's also not easy because, again, that factors in you have a 14-point game or a 17-point game or you fall way below what the average of that is, and now you're making up points. Just look at it over a 17-week stretch that you have to make up almost 90 points to average 26 a game, right? From what the Falcons were last year, 21 and a half. Just that four and a half points is almost 90 points over the course of a season. Well, think about how much an additional... 90 points for the Falcons would have made this past season, right? So again, this that's not an easy thing. You know, it, it, it's it's not easy to just arbitrarily say, well, we, we can be a 26-point-per-game offense. That Those things just don't happen in a vacuum, okay? So let's go over to the defensive side. <clears throat> again, the Falcons have only finished in the top 20 in sacks twice since 2015. OK, so 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, those seasons, they've only finished twice in the top 20. Guess which years those were? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, yeah. 2016 and 2017, the last time that we were playoff teams. And I think the last time the Falcons averaged or, or at least got, I think, 38 sacks, I think was 2017. But even in 2016, they didn't have 38 sacks. So again, you know, we talk about that magical number that if you're 38 or more sacks since 20, since 2016, 70% of the playoff teams have been 38 or more sack types of teams. Again, these things are just not random coincidence, happenstance in the universe, Cinderella story out of nowhere. 
These are all things that that go on, you know, in the league and the trends about where you have to be in the league to have success. So as I look at this and say, okay, can we average 26 points a game or <clears throat> have 38 or more sacks on the season? I think the more likely scenario is to average 26 points per game. Now, the reason that I say that, okay, number one, we described this the other day. We talked about this just the other day on the podcast. You're going to have to be elite in the red zone, and that's where it all starts. Can't be 14th, can't be 24th, can't be top 10. You have to be top five, maybe six <coughs> to be elite in the red zone. That's going to require getting 67% of your possessions that result in a touchdown when you get in the red zone. That, to me, is what elite is. When you look at elite red zone numbers, two-thirds of your scores are touchdowns in the red zone. Okay, so that's the first place that we have to live is when we get down in the red zone, can't settle for three, can't rely on three points. You have to go in and start scoring touchdowns to make that happen. Because again, at 26 points a game, you're almost four touchdowns a game. You're just shy of four touchdowns per game. So you have to be great in the red zone. I think you also have to be good where you can pick up some plays that catch teams off guard and result in touchdowns, right? A, a, a big pass play, you know, a big 40-yard pass play or, you know, a, a big gainer or hit, big hit over the middle or whatever. Like there has to be some of those plays <clears throat> that occur over the course of a season. Well, I think with Pitts, London, Jonu Smith, you know, obviously Algier, Bijan, Cordero Patterson, right? I think we have some of those guys that can hit some home runs for us, right? You have to have the ability <clears throat> to be able to hit some home runs on your offensive side of the football. And I think we have some of those guys. Are, are we a team <clears throat> loaded up with speed guys and this, that, and the other? No, I mean, we're not We're not a team that is, you know, big downfield threats. And, you know, we're not going to necessarily take, you know, tons of shots downfield anyway. You know, our offense is going to be – more balanced or still more run heavy. But you got to be able to have that playmaking ability in the NFL to jack up your point totals, right? On the defensive side of everything, again, can the Falcons be better in their pass rush? Sure. I, I definitely think that they are going to be better than the 39 sacks that they've had combined for the last two years. So if we're looking at 21 sacks, are they going to be better than that? Sure. I don't know that they are double their number from last year or double their number from two years ago. I don't know that they have that kind of significant jump and in increase in that. Because again, we haven't seen it, right? I mean, again, when we talk about this, you know, oh, you know, we got this guy and that guy. Okay, well, is Calais Campbell going to get five? Sacks again this season, playing 20% less snaps over the course of a year. Because again, he was a 60% snap guy. <clears throat> I don't think he's a I don't think he's a 60% snap guy for this team. And if he is, well, that means either Onyamata or Carter or somebody's gonna have their snaps cut. So again, what there's you have to factor in, you know, how much these guys play, what the rotation is, and things like that. You know, unless you count on a Vic Beasley type of season out of Arnold Ebicady, where all of a sudden it's a 15 and a half sack season and it's Cinderella story out of nowhere, right? Unless we can count on that, I don't know how we get to 38, 40 sacks. So again, as the Ghostbuster said, we are ready to believe you, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> I think the ability to get to 26 points a game, mostly through our red zone offense, is a more likely scenario than even the 38 sacks. So do the Falcons have the ability to shock the world and do both? Maybe. Do the Falcons have the ability to do neither one of those things? Certainly. And if they don't do either one of those things, maybe tough to get in the playoffs, maybe tough to turn this thing around and 
find ourselves in the playoffs when all is said and done. Hopefully that's not the case, but obviously, listen, you know, Arthur Smith, Terry Fontenot, those guys need to have some success and they need to find a way to have a winning season. All right, let's talk about our friends over at Built Bar. Listen, as everybody's eating healthier and getting in shape, you're looking for those healthier alternatives in the snack world, right? So listen, Built Bar's got you covered. 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, only four net carbs, but the whopping 17 grams of proteins. So if you're looking for either traditional protein bars or if you like the a marshmallow or the protein-infused marshmallow puffs, either way, they've got you covered where you got great tasting treats coming out with new flavors every single month. I think the latest one I saw was peanut butter and jelly. So new flavors coming out every single month. But now we've got the ability to go in there and purchase your Built Bars a couple of different ways. You can go to Built.com, order your protein bars, wait for them to come in the mail, or now you can head to the pharmacy section of Walmart, or you can go to Sam's Club. So if you want to go the brick and mortar route, <clears throat> I'm going to Sam's Club, Walmart, and pick up your box of Built Bars instantly right there at the store. Now you can do that. If you're not, you know, if you're if you're willing to wait around and, you know, go online, go to Built.com, surf the website, check everything out, put your order in, and get exactly what you want. But either way now, you can enjoy the quality and the taste of Built Bars when you head to Built.com or Walmart or Sam's Club. So the Falcons, as we as we get ready for Thursday night, right? Tomorrow night is the NFL uh, uh, release schedule, the schedule release for tomorrow night, right? That'll happen at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And we know the Falcons' opponents, obviously, so we know who the Falcons are going to play. It's just a matter of the way the schedule is going to fall, right? You know, last year, he had a couple of games on the West Coast very early in the season, weeks two and three. So he had the ability to stay out there on the West Coast. They were back-to-back -back games. <clears throat> so I thought that actually helped the Falcons out just because if you're going to stay on the West Coast, you know, stay out there, have multiple games in a row, just not where you pop out for a couple of random trips. And I thought it was early in the season to where you don't have the beat up factor and things like that. So, you know, we'll look at what the schedule is. Now, look, here's the other thing, too. We're going to make all these wild proclamations, right? That's what we do, right? We're, we're going to make all these wild proclamations, 17 and 0. It's, it's you know, this and that and what have you like that. But I'm already seeing some of these things that are popping up out here. So headline from uh, Yahoo Sports. Um, Falcons have the NFL's easiest strength of schedule in 2023. So based upon what last season's records was for teams that the Falcons are going to face, they had a combined winning percentage. They had they had a, a winning uh, a, a record, excuse me, of 119, 167, and three last season. That gives the Falcons opponents in 2023 an overall winning percentage of just 417. 119, 167, and three, a 417 winning percentage. That means that the Falcons have the easiest schedule in the NFL, the easiest strength of schedule in the NFL. Now, okay, lots of flaws and warts with all of this, all right? So number one, first off, you are playing a last place schedule, right? I mean, whether we like that or not, you know, the idea is that you're playing a last place schedule based upon where the Falcons finished. They were 7-10. and 10, They were last in their division. So you're playing a last place schedule anyway. So that means when you match up with some of the other divisions in the NFC, <clears throat> you're not playing the top team necessarily in a division. You may be playing the bottom tier team. So that's number one. Number two is, obviously, this doesn't factor in what teams do on the offseason and draft and everything else. So a couple of years ago, this is a perfect example. A couple of years ago, the Jacksonville Jaguars were a 3-14 and 14 team, right? Oh, they had Urban Meyer, and that was a disaster, and things didn't go well, and this, and the other, and they were the laughing stock of the NFL, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, fast forward a year later, and now all of a sudden, they were 9-8, and eight, won their division, and were, what, a second-round playoff team when all was said and done? Things can change in the, in a moment, and this is why I get frustrated 
about the NFL and, and just the fact that the Falcons haven't taken advantage. The league is set up to be worst to first. The league is set up to go from being bad to being really good in just a year's time, no matter what the excuses are. I mean, you know, again, wow, you know, we don't have money or this or that. Well, okay, the, the, the league is set up to where they give you the ability to be successful. Whether you have free agent money or whether you don't have, I mean, even if you don't have free agent money, you always can find money, but whatever. I mean, you know, but again, when you look at this, it, it, it it's, it's kind of crazy in a lot of ways, right? I mean, it makes for a good storyline. It makes for a good headline, but it's never reality. When, <clears throat> when you've got to go on the road in the NFL, you're almost instantly a underdog, unless you're talking about one of the better teams going on the road to one of the worst teams in the NFL. So going on the road in the NFL, life is never easy. Then you're going to have a Thursday night game, right? So you're going to have that quick turnaround where, again, you know, we saw how that went went for um, the, the Falcons last year against the Carolina Panthers, right? An NFL schedule is never easy. That That's why there's no apologies when you run the table in an NFL schedule. I don't care if you're 12 and five or, you know, 13 and four or, you know, 16, you know, and one or 17 and oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, from the standpoint of if you run the NFL schedule and you have success, nobody looks back and says, okay, well, they had an easy schedule or this or that or whatever like that. You beat all of the teams that are in front of you. You beat the teams that you line up against and especially in your division where you play everybody twice <clears throat> and you don't apologize for having success. Nobody's going to care that the if the Falcons go 11 and 6 next year, okay? No one's going to care about the idea of, well, they had an easy schedule. It's still an NFL schedule. There are no Louisiana Monroe's on your schedule, right? There are no Southwest technical states on your schedule. It's the NFL. Everybody's good in some way. Everybody has talent. Everybody can spend the money. Nobody's at a necessarily disadvantage with what your roster is. Your roster is what you create. If you don't draft well and sign good free agents, then your roster is going to stink. And you won't, and, and those people won't have jobs very long. So again, I, I look at this and I just kind of laugh and say, eh, all right. I mean, it's a nice headline, nice story. But again, life in the NFL is never what you think that it is. Life in the NFL is never one of those things that it's taken for granted and you just, oh, well, you know, because we'll go down the schedule, right? I mean, we'll look at it and say, oh, well, that's a win, that's a win, that's a win, that's a win. Okay. Well, it's usually never that easy. And, it, and injuries and road trips and all these different things that factor into what life in the NFL is really like over the grind of a season. So, yes, tomorrow we're going to, you know, we'll – Tomorrow night, we'll be having lots of hoopla and hype and all this kind of stuff. And the schedule release will be out. And we'll take a look on Friday what the Falcons' schedule looks like and all this good stuff, right? But at the end of the day, you just need to beat the teams in front of you. And, and I know I sound like a coach and cliched, but one, one week at a time, one game at a time, beat the team that's in front of you. Whether they were good last year, bad last year, none of that stuff matters now. They are what they are this year in the NFL. Again, you may be first to last, you know, or sorry, from worst to first and last to first and all this good kind of stuff. All that matters is what you are currently when it comes to the NFL. That's why it's a not for long league. All that matters is what have you done for me today as far as winning football games? All right, after you make Hitting Hard with John Chuck with your first listen, be sure that you go in <coughs> and leave us a comment in whatever platform you're on in the comment section, that you are an everyday listener. So we do appreciate our everydayers, as we like to call them. And we thank you so much for being an everyday listener. So listen in five days a week to Hitting Hard. Leave us a comment that you're an everydayer. And we greatly appreciate the fact that as we're into this journey from over a year now, that you are part of our audience and we can come in in five days a week, provide you some entertainment and some fun. And obviously, just let us know that you're an everyday listener, an everyday or to us. So a, you know what the falcoholic is, right, folks? 
You're familiar with the Falcoholic, part of SB Nation that covers the Atlanta Falcons, right? So that's their particular website. Dave Choate and those guys do a great job. Um, I like a lot of those guys. I, I have them on the show and talk to them, and you know we follow each other on social media and all that good stuff. They're, they're good people over there. So the Cleveland Browns SB Nation website is called Dogs by Nature, okay? So we're the Falcoholic. That's our SB Nation community, okay? The Browns have dogs by nature, okay? And they talk about the idea of that the Browns who are looking to upgrade and obviously think they're a playoff team and, you know, want to be a Super Bowl contender and all this, that, and the other. They talk about how Andrew Barry, who's the general manager of the Cleveland Browns, that um, he could be in the mix for several players over the next few weeks involved in trades, plucking guys maybe off of, you know, June 1st cuts and all this kind of stuff, okay? So here's what I'm going to read you, okay? Taking the suggestion of one of our readers, yes, we love to read through our comment section, so please join in. We have decided that Atlanta Falcons running back kicker, or sorry, running back wide receiver kick returner, Cordero Patterson, is the perfect fit for Barry to acquire. And then they go on to say, quote, even when, when processing a trade rumor <clears throat> target suggestion, there are a few important questions to ask. Would that player actually be available? How would they fit for the team? What would the compensation have to be to acquire? How much is the player's contract? For the potential to acquire Patterson, let us look at each of these questions. Look, Here's what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to make this simple for you, all right? And, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak for Terry Fontenot as, as the de facto general manager of the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, obviously, if I'd been in charge of the organization over the last handful of years, we would have multiple Super Bowls by now because I would not have drafted, you know, tight ends, wide receivers, and different things like that. And I, I would have drafted high caliber defensive edge players and we would lead the league in sacks but anyway that that's a different story for another day but as a de facto gm okay i'll make it very simple for the browns organization okay here's all you gotta do they want cordero patterson right they think he'd be a great fit in this and the other okay here's what we do i give you cordero patterson you give us miles garrett it, it's simple i listen i am willing to do a one-for-one one deal for the all-time NFL leader in kick return <clears throat> touchdowns, a guy who Arthur Smith has made a all-multi-purpose guy in the NFL, you know, double-digit touchdowns a couple of years ago for a guy that, you know, was, you know, kind of floundering around in his career. Arthur Smith saw something in Cordero Patterson and turned him into both a rushing and receiving threat. So I'm going to make it easy for the Browns, okay? It's a one for, we don't have to get into draft picks and this and that and different things, you know, and figuring out, you know, the right compensation package. It's simple. If the Browns want Cordero Patterson, fine. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll give you Cordero Patterson. We'll take Miles Garrett. I know, listen, I know it's only a, a one, one for one type of trade, right? That that you know we're not we're not you know we're not asking the Browns to throw in draft picks you know throw in a, throw in Miles Garrett and a fifth round draft pick or you know a wide receiver or you know something we we'll, we will be fair in our compensation just we give you Cordell Patterson give us back in return Miles Garrett that's all I mean one for one right. Now, look, I'm being facetious when I say all this kind of stuff, and it is kind of fun to to think about the idea of, you know, Cordell Patterson, you know, and coming up with a trade scenario. But, again, just give me Miles Garrett, you know. I mean, we can make this real simple. I mean, I can, I'll, I'll call up Andrew Barry right now and say, look, Andrew, you want Cordell Patterson? Cool. Okay, we want Miles Garrett in return. Hello? Hello? Anybody there? Anybody there? Click. So again, I'm being facetious when I say all of this kind of stuff that we're not getting Miles Garrett. Wouldn't that be great though if we had Miles Garrett? Wouldn't it be great if we had a number one pick who 
we had to pay $150 million to in their second contract because they're so good and so productive that the entire marketplace is like savoring at the idea of him getting to a free agency period, right? Wouldn't we love to have one of those guys that's a complete game wrecker and game changer on our defensive line? And, you know, again, teams are salivating over the idea of, you know, trying to get their hands on a guy. Well, maybe the Browns won't sign him in this to any other. But again, we can make it real simple and real easy. You give us Miles Garrett, we give you Cordero Patterson. Nothing more, nothing less, one for one, one player for another, and we can make this deal happen overnight. Uh, heck, I'll even, I'll even throw in, if need be, okay? I'll even throw in Adi Ogundeji. How about that? I'll even sweeten the pot. I'll give you Cordell Patterson and Adi Ogundeji, and you give us Miles Garrett in return. I think that's more than fair, right? I think that's certainly a trade that can certainly make happen. But if they want Patterson, just give us Garrett, and and we'll give you we'll give you Patterson and Ogundeji. I'll do two for one out of all of this. Again, being facetious uh, on everything, but it is kind of fun to think about the idea of you know maybe Cordero Patterson being on the move or different things like that. So anyway, we thank you for making uh, Hitting Hard your first listen every day. Make sure when you go in to the comment section of whatever platform that you're on, let us know that you're an everyday listener, right? That you are an everydayer to listening to the show five days a week. We do thank you so much for being a part of our ever-growing community. You can also subscribe or follow for free on YouTube wherever you listen to your podcast. Get the latest episodes of Hitting Hard as soon as they become available. And then also check us out on the Sirius XM app now. Sirius XM app. That's a very, very cool thing that we're on that platform now. And then give me a follow at JMCH316 on Twitter. Back with you tomorrow. This has been Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked on Sports Atlanta. 